I'll be honest with you, this video is going to be a little bit boring, sorry. But before you click back and watch another video instead, please subscribe! No, I'm only joking, but do stay and listen, because even though it's not very exciting, this is something which every single photographer and videographer needs to be thinking about, and it could save your bacon, your reputation, and your wallet. You'll be glad you watched. So I want to give you some advice on storage. Now as creatives, some of our most valuable and irreplaceable assets are the digital files that we create, be that photos, videos, or audio files. It's so important that you have a system of storage for these priceless assets, which gives you enough space to have them well organized so that you can find things easily and to make deletion due to human error less likely, as well as something that backs everything up automatically so you don't have to remember to do it yourself. Because let's be honest, you'll forget, and it's Sod's law that it'll be then that something bad happens. Good organization has to be quick and it has to be easy, otherwise it will just not happen. You may often hear the term redundancy when talking about data backup, and no, that's not punishment for those who forget to back stuff up, although maybe it should be. A hard drive is considered to be redundant when it has at least one mirror or another drive that sits silently alongside it, copying absolutely everything that the main one has on it. If either hard drive dies, sorry, I should say when the hard drive dies, all is not lost because you still have the other drive and all your data intact. Now, I used to achieve that myself with a NAS, that's a network attached storage device, which basically is like a large hard drive which plugs into a home or office network. And that means it's accessible from any device on the network, like desktops, laptops, TVs, media streaming devices, etc. But unlike a normal external hard drive, it also has two separate hard drives in it. You've guessed it, for redundancy. So the second disk is constantly sitting there as an exact replica of the first. One of the drives in mine did start to fail a couple of years ago and needed replacing, so without the redundancy, I would have been in danger of losing everything. With a capacity of two terabytes, that's 2,000 gigabytes, that sounds like a lot, but over the five or so years I've had it, I've gradually filled it up to the point that I didn't have enough space to store everything and ended up overflowing to other drives, which was certainly less than ideal, both from a data safety point of view and that of good organization. I was initially going to buy a second NAS to dedicate to video footage, but then whilst I was editing this year's showreel for my video production company, which naturally involves importing lots of archive footage, I was frustrated by the unsurprisingly poor performance of video previews, even when being fed via a gigabit connection. So I decided to scrap the idea of a new, bigger NAS and instead go for beefing up the internal storage inside my video editing PC so that everything could be kept local. After all, a SATA 3 connection beats a network drive hands down every time. You can also get much more bang for your buck when going down this approach, as the data I'm storing doesn't desperately need to be accessible from anywhere else on my network, even with the main video editing PC turned off, which is one of the main benefits that the NAS provides. The other function, data redundancy across two drives, can be achieved easily within Windows without having to bear the cost of the NAS hardware to do that for you within your budget. Before we get into the hard drives and how to install them, time for a very quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Videoblocks. If you produce videos for a living, then you should definitely try them out with a free trial. Why? Well, they give you unlimited access to their enormous library of stock footage, motion graphics, and After Effects templates for a single, low, annual fee. So, whether you need an epic drone shot of some solar panels for your video on modern energy solutions, or you need some nicely polished titles for a project that needs to be delivered tomorrow, you can download as much as you like to use royalty-free, and everything you download is yours to keep forever. Click the link in the video description for a seven-day free trial, and you can keep everything you download during the trial too. So after looking around online, the hard drives I went for were a pair of these high-performance 6TB Toshiba hard drives with a spin speed of 7200 RPM and a 128MB buffer. You can find out more information as well as purchasing links to support this channel in the video description below, so take a look. Although it's not absolutely required, two identical drives mean they'll work perfectly in a mirror together. So to get that all set up, all you do is install them in the normal way as you would with any other hard drive, making sure that if your motherboard has different speed SATA ports that you plug them into the fastest available. As we'll be creating the mirrored volume within Windows, you don't need to mess with any settings in your BIOS. Once they're plugged in, switch your computer back on and then click Start and then type in Disk Management. Since these are brand new hard drives, they'll need to be initialized before you proceed any further, so make sure GPT is selected and then press OK. Here you can see my primary and secondary SSDs, as well as my old local storage volume, which is made up of two 500GB drives, giving me a total of 1TB for local, non-redundant working storage in a striped drive for performance. 
I'm replacing that with the mirrored 6TB drives, which are discs 2 and 4 in this list, the ones which are 6TB in size and colour-coded black, as they just contain unallocated space at the moment. Creating a mirrored volume is really easy. You just right-click the first drive and select New Mirrored Volume, and on the next dialog that pops up, you can also add the second drive to the mirror. If you're really paranoid, you can, of course, buy more than one extra drive and add additional redundant drives to the array, but I'm just going for one extra here. Click Next and choose a different drive letter if you have a preference, and then Next again to select your formatting options and give the drive a label. If they're brand new drives, you can click Perform a Quick Format before pressing Next and then Finish. In fact, I'd recommend clicking Quick Format, otherwise be prepared to wait several hours. Windows will alert you that you'll be converting the disks from basic to dynamic, which is fine and exactly what we want to do, so click Yes on that dialog box, and then Windows will create the mirror and format your drives. Once that's done, you can start copying your files onto the new mirrored array, which will of course just show up inside Windows as a single hard drive, with the copying and backing up going on seamlessly behind the scenes without you even needing to lift a finger. So that's my new setup done and dusted, with plenty of redundant local storage for all my media files, and lots more free space on my NAS too, which is definitely a bonus. Remember, this is just my on-site setup, and this doesn't cover off-site backup, which is also important. What does your setup look like? Let me know in the comments section and feel free to share hints and tips with each other so we can all help each other out. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting, useful or both, and take a look at some of the other videos on the channel which you should definitely find interesting if you're into building computer systems, video and photography. For example, you can look at my review and comparison of the NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card versus CPU only for video rendering in Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects by clicking up there or another video from the channel picked just for you by clicking down there. We cover a range of topics encompassing technology, gadgets, the internet, photography and videography on this channel, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do click the switched on network icon for that too. Thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon.